It's almost 4.30, so if all the candidates want to come sit up in the chairs in front, you guys can send any order. Serve as a principal representative of the student commission to the faculty, staff, administration, and board of trustees. Serve as chair of the executive committee and the commission assembly. Vote only in order to break ties in the commission assembly. Serve as an ex officio member of all subsidiary bodies of the student commission. Make appointments and create committees. And to start this uh, speeches tonight, I'd like to invite uh, Darren Hamlary to speak. Uh, the five minutes, Darren, you can speak either from the podium or are we going to make a student commissioners and no um, regular students, so this is really wonderful. Um, so my name is Darren, I, I'm a junior, I was studying abroad in Ecuador. I am running for president of the commission. I've served as a first year commissioner and as secretary of finance the last two years. Um, uh, so the secretary of finance is on the executive board. And as a first year commissioner, I was serving on the experiential education committee and the financial policies committee. And during my first year and last year, I've sponsored several resolutions um, calling on the administration to do various things. Um, one of them being to have a more affordable tuition rate, another being um, having student voice on, in the dining services bidding process, which was actually really success successful. We had two students on that. Um, another being having more descriptive campus 
incident, incident reports, and we have events on campus. Um, and the final is the improving transparency of the student activity fee, which um, the only component that we can give transparency to is the stuff that student commission allocates. There's a still two thirds of money that we don't know where it goes. It goes to OSI, it goes to, to SAC and other various departments, but we don't have full transparency on that. Um, so during my term as Secretary of Finance, I uh, reformed several things along with the rest of the commission, including um, making club sports more um, independent with their funding structure so they can have more lenience towards going to different campus or off campus um, tournaments and things like that. Um, opened FPC meetings for the first time in student commission history to allow for students to come in. Um, increasing the budget for student organizations by $5,000, created the Committee on Student Organizations in response to a need from student organizations that they wanted to have more direct connection between StuCom and, and their groups, um, and helped OSI create the $300 bonding money that groups use to go uh, do off-campus um, things so that they don't have to have for the whole uh, commission. So, and I've worked on the commission before with President Meredith, Meredith Quinlan and Alex Morgan. Um, and last year, serving with Meredith, we did a lot of work towards having transparency and accountability within the commission. Um, and as president, I'm looking forward to do the same thing. And that's why my three points um, that I'm going to outline today include things that are going to be more open, things that are going to offer more open and transparent um, commission for all of you. So the first is a president's advisory council, which is my idea to have like a once a month conference call where people hang out with all student leaders, anyone who identifies themselves as a student leader. If you don't, you're still, you're still welcome to join in on this call. But have a more direct connection between student commission, the president, the vice president, um, and students. So it'd be a once a month thing where you could call in and ask a question or just listen to what's going on. Um, but it's another way for you to be in touch with what's going on outside of the student commission meeting. The second thing that I'm proposing is a student innovation fund which would be part of the student commission budget, um, which would be focused towards ideas and things on campus to create some sort of change here. And it'd be open to all students regardless of student organization status. Um, it's just another way for you to sort of bring that, that idea of creating change here back to campus. And then finally, I want to have a student member on the board of trustees by the end of next year so that we can have some real accountability of the college and the administration um, outside of just what we do when we say things. But I want this person to have real voting power. Um, and so, before I, I turn this over to Wyatt, I just wanted to say that, you know, student commission does matter, and regardless of what a lot of students think about student commission, it really does matter who's representing you to the students, to the, to the administration. Um, we've, we've had years where people don't care about SUCOM. I think this year is a completely different thing. We've got a lot of student interest, and I'm really happy that there have been a lot of students involved. And that's why I'm making this campaign so big. That's why, you know, I've been knocking on every single dorm door in all the residence halls. I've been at dozens of events, trying to make it so that student commission is out and open um, and being able to reach out to students in a different way that we've never seen before. So, you know, and it's not about me, it's not about Wyatt and Noggin, it's not about Cameron, this is about what we have going forward for Calvin's College, what we have going forward together with student commission. Um, so my name's Darren, I'm running for president, and I would love to have your support. Good afternoon, everyone. As Ian said, my name is Wyatt Smith. I am a junior here on campus. Um, I'm also running for president of student commission, and I will tell you why. So, student commission has long been a tool of choice uh, to affect change in institutions across the world. Student government is a lean and effective way to get the student voice heard when it works. Throughout my time as student commission, I time and time again observed a breakdown of one key principle, present student voice. Um, having been head of information services committee this past year, I conducted a survey that reached 200 students on campus and when brought to the administration saw immediate change in the way that the internet and our uh, television is brought to the campus. So this really I feel is the way that student commission should be run. It should be run by the students and the student voice and that will be one very focal point or one very key point that Ogden and I will focus on in our administration. So, as many of you may know, uh, throughout this year, Student Commission's actions have prim primarily been monetary. Um, the fact that finances so dominate our discussions has concerned commissioners and students alike. So I'm proposing two different changes to the Financial Policies Committee that will hopefully make it a more open and fair uh, committee for students. 
The first would allow them to approve larger budget issues. Currently, they can only allow allocate 1% of the budget, and this ties up a lot of our time in um, allocating budgets that are greater than the $1,000 they can allocate. And the second would allow any student to request funds, um, regardless of student organization. So we would do away with the current gift fund, and if you're a student who wishes to bring a speaker to campus or improve the campus in some way, you can do that, you can request funds for that. Uh, while the Federal Policies Committee, Financial Policies Committee can be fixed and needs to be, uh, there are other more pressing issues, namely the commission itself. Currently, the commission operates in a very disparate and inefficient manner. Um, it's no way conducive to creating a unified student voice on campus that we can bring to the administration. So to remedy this, the executive board will meet regularly with committee heads um, to discuss goals and directions that the commission will go as a unit. Um, and this will really create a body that works together as one unit and brings the student voice to the administration. So the commission is a body that derives its power from the students and their uh, participation in voting and things like this. And lately, the student voice has been absent in the commission. Student involvement, much like the K plan, should begin the first day of classes and last until you throw your cap in the air. And by increasing the presence of student commission during events such as orientation and visit the zoo, we will generate an interest and involvement in the incoming classes of Kalamazoo and kind of create a whole new uh, feel for the campus community. Um, building new student interest is crucial to the future of student commission, but the current students are those who know the issues that are currently facing us and the ones that affect us. And so, with the growing number of students of color on campus, there requires more education on the part of the commission to better represent the interests of all students. And so, the current Committee on Multiculturalism is in the process of creating this kind of space for discussion and education for all students on campus, um, for issues of race, class, and how they are integral to us as a student body and also as global citizens. Um, to, so, to create a more fair and just commission, one that listens to students and then takes their voices to the administration, we need to reevaluate our relationship with the administration. This includes evaluating how effective student commission is as a body currently, and how the administration views our role in relation to them. Examining this relationship and improving it to better represent the student body will be a top priority for Ogden and I. We plan to lay out all of the ways that we as student commission can currently affect change, and. Uh, determine their efficacy and efficiency and change them if they are not in line with the students' needs. The Student Commission has been a powerful body of change on this campus in the past and has the potential to be that again. Uh, bring the student voice back to Student Commission by voting for Wyatt and Wyatt. Myself and Ogden. <laughs>
I have a question for both Wyatt and Darren. Uh, what sort of relationship slash reputation do you currently have with the administration, and how do you plan to amend or further that relationship as president? Yeah, sure. Um, okay, so I've been head of information services, as I said. So I've worked with Greg Dement in information technology and services this past year. Uh, I've also worked pretty thoroughly with Brian Deeds as well on various committees like the Homecoming Committee. Um, and we've had pretty a good back and forth over the Committee on Student Organization as well, which I'm also a part of. Uh, to improve that, I think that meeting with more higher up administrators, um, I haven't met with the president yet, but I would very I would do that immediately, obviously, since that's who I'll be interacting with. Um, and I think that building relationships with her will be key, as well as spreading out uh, to other administrators. Um, so I've served on the executive board before, and I've had uh, relationships with Dean Westfall and the president and Brian. Um, really, because we worked really closely last year and changing a lot of things the student commission did, and because of the hard work that we put in last year. We have, I think that I have a really good positive working relationship with the president and the dean uh, and the associate dean Beats as well. And um, I'll be able to use those relationships that I already have, like we're on a first name basis almost, except for the president, but <laughs> the dean and I are on a first name basis. And we're you know, looking to, to do some of the things that I proposed to, to make the student commission better. And because we already know each other, I think that we'll be able to have that good dialogue and have those good debates with one another to make, make things happen. Do we have further questions? Um, so, uh, this question is to both the presidential candidates. A lot of people talk about um, increasing visibility of student commission by um, bringing student commission to more events on campus. And I think, why you mentioned that um, in your short speech earlier. Um, I was wondering whether you, whether both of you think that that's a real way of actually getting people to associate, to relate to student commission, or do you guys think that um, there needs to be more su substantial um, initiative from student commission to try to adapt to um, the views that students have about student commission to actually get people to care and like student commission as opposed to just being present and being in people's faces without actually doing something that they necessarily care about? Because from what I've seen and heard, I feel as though that's that's um, a prevalent view of most people that student commission tries to be out there to, uh, in front of people and try to make their name get heard, but not actually do something that they care about. So, what do you? I want to hear what what you have to say about that. Um, so yeah, like I said, um, we would definitely increase our presence at things like visit the student orientation, and I think. A large part of those events would be education about what Student Commission does. A lot of students on campus don't know all the different facets that Student Commission is involved in, and I think that therefore they feel disconnected from it. Um, they don't feel that it really represents their issues when it really we're represented on almost every single different committee that interacts with like housing, uh, faculty, um, information services, etc. And so we would also. Um, really, we would, well, another thing I didn't mention, but we would mandate that a certain number of commissioners are at events. And I think that being there and building relationships with students, um, even if it is at first like forced or whatever by on um, behalf of us, because this past year, not very many commissioners have been showing up to events like the commission has been funding. And so I think that's a large issue with the fact that no one knows who the commissioners are even. Um, and so we would really feel that commissioners should be present and talking to students, talking to student organization leaders, etc., and building those relationships that then can be carried over into when a student has an issue, they will come to us because they feel like we can actually represent them in a way that is helpful to them. So one of the things the Student Commission President does during orientation is uh, he or she introduces him, him or herself to the freshman class. I don't know if some of the first years here remember that, um, but they have a speech and they get a letter. Um, I think it's on the portal now. It used to be in mailboxes. But that's the first step towards making the connection between the first years that come in and uh, the student commission. Um, and so that's that's there, and I, I look forward to continuing that and being around for first year orientation events uh, at all of them that I can, and hopefully recruiting good candidates to run for student commission as first years. Um, but another thing that I'm really interested in doing is sort of having an above all, you know, all of the above approach towards reaching out to the students. 
Um, so the first thing that I talked about earlier was the President's Advisory Council, which I think would be a really good thing to have more direct connection and conversation between people outside of a regular student commission meeting um, so it's more accessible to people. But also another idea that I had is to have like a Twitter town hall once a, once a quarter. And if you have a question, you can tweet it to student commission and we'll be there live tweeting answers to you. Um, and also door knocking and putting things in people's mailboxes just to get as many people involved in the process as possible because if we don't have your voices in this process, we don't know how to ac accurately represent you to the administration. Um, and to me, that's also, you know, attending events. I don't know if making it mandatory is going to work with commissioners because of various schedules and things, but encouraging it and making sure that all commissioners are doing the things that they should be doing as a representative of the same body. Okay, do we have further questions? Um, well, I was wondering uh, kind of what your, your thoughts were on, first of all, if you think that there is, or if you, sorry, I'm trying to figure out how to phrase this. I think that there is a sense among the student body that, first of all, um, there is a sort of elitism with StuCom that if you're not on StuCom, then you don't have an effect. You can't have, you can't be like have an effective voice on campus and also that even if you are at StuCon, that you have to have like the right in with certain people. And I was wondering what like personal leadership qualities you guys think that you possess to handle that and to try to make people feel more included. Um, or you can, I guess I've done first of all. Um, so I think like having personal relationships with a lot of different students from various groups on campus is going to be crucial to bring in different voices. Um, Cameron was on the football team, so having that, that um, connection with athletes is going to be critical. I think they're about a quarter of the population on campus, and a lot of times they're disconnected to what's going on with the rest of the student commission and the rest of the people who are involved in student organizations. So having Cameron and I being able to reach out to various different social groups, I think that we'd be able to bring more people in. Um, and also just being open and approachable and being willing to talk at any, any moment. And that's something that I've always committed to doing with all the students here on campus. Yeah, I feel like um, I'm very talkable a little too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm to me with their issues about student commission and things like that. And I think that being on the committee of student organizations, I've interacted with a lot of different students on campus. And um, while one of the complaints has been that student commission has focused too much on student organizations in the past, we would definitely expand that out to reaching out to students outside of student organizations and building those networks that can then be used to build students. We have time for one final question. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, all right, I'm going to do a quick, I mean, a long question, and it's probably going to be a long answer, but you guys can answer part of it. Um, so this is more of a follow-up question. So here are some big things that have happened this year, some issues that I would really like to see addressed next year. So um, dining has been one thing, there are new vendor ethics studies, um, more first year engagement, so like orientation and RA stuff, um, engagement on the commission, and also student appearance, especially after the recall, and just whole visibility issues. So what's the question? <laughs> Are you just asking us to address each of those five points? You can, or if that's too long, if we don't have time for that, you can pick top three that you plan on following through with next year. You know, how you're going to do that, some ideas you have on those issues. So, ethnic studies, res life? Well, res life was the first year right. orientation, just like first year engagement. Yeah. Okay, yeah. engagement yeah. on student commission, student appearance, ethnic study, and dining. <coughs> um, so, for dining, there was just recently a meeting uh, with Farms Decay yeah. that discussed how students feel about them, about creative, uh, creative dining and what students want out of them as a provider. And I feel that, that is a very, that's a very strong initial beginning to our new relationship with our food for service provider and that will be very key um, next year and even if near the end of this quarter when creative service or creative dining comes to campus to talk to us about what we want from them as a provider. Um, Ethnic studies, the discussions are ongoing, but certainly Aj and I are more than willing to throw all of our weight behind that to continue that push um, and discuss with the various parties involved in that. Let's see. Res Life and RA, that is kind of the student. We're currently forming a new kind of committee that's a Res Life committee. 
that will meet with RAs and the area coordinators as well as the Dean of um, probably like two to three times a quarter and use utilize the RAs as a resource for both student commission to get information out to students and to also get information from the RA about the general student uh, like temperature, how they're feeling about things. And what were the other two things? I think you asked three. Yeah, how about we just do three? Um, and so my, specifics are good. Yeah, my three things are going to be the dining, um, the dining process, switching over and going through the transition, ethnic studies, and pushing towards this new program. Uh, we do have a professor coming to K next year to focus on ethnic studies and teach a class a quarter and also work on the curriculum. They haven't picked this person yet, but being there to support um, students who are really interested in this project and also being there as an ally to make sure that we have a really good voice in this professor and making sure this person is going to be there to develop a really good curriculum for us at K. And then finally, engagement with student commission. Um, I think that we need to have commissioners who are trained well to represent students and go through a different kind of sort of training process during our retreats and make them longer so we can not only get to know each other better, but also learn how to accurately represent a student and how to accurately collect data from students and create surveys and do all these different things that are, are going to be helpful to the student body. And if we don't have the accurate training right away, then we're not going to be able to serve them correctly. Okay. Thank you, Tim. Very interesting. Um, on now to the Office of Vice President. Um, as a note, the President and Vice President and candidates run as a ticket, not as individuals. So Darren and Cameron will be running as one ticket, and Wyatt and Ogden will be running as another ticket. We vote for both of them, not just one. Um, and then for the Office of Vice President itself, the description we have in our Constitution is, the Vice President shall assist the President in the administration of the Student Commission, serve as an ex officio member of all subsidiary bodies of the Student Commission, and assume the duties of the president of the student commission in his or her absence, either permanently or temporarily. And we're going to start this off with Cameron Goodall, who is currently on study abroad in Germany, but we have him here over Skype. Uh, Cameron, can you still hear us? Cameron? Yeah, can you hear me? I won't be able to give hand signals to you, but I'll just say one minute when you're at one minute, and then time when you're done. So, okay, yeah, that's fine. That's okay, fine. so it's your turn. you got uh, five minutes. Okay, thanks, Ian. Um, hello, everyone. Hope you're doing great. Um, I'm currently, yes, as Ian said, in Germany, studying abroad. It's a wonderful time. I really enjoy it. Um, but the student commission role, vice president, why I'm running. Um, I guess to start off, this wasn't. This is something I've been thinking about through the entire year, and Darren and I kind of talked about it over winter break. Um, it was kind of an interesting start to the year. It's kind of a different dynamic. I've been on Stucom since last, um, since freshman year of winter. I was involved in FPC as a second or er, deputy secretary of finance, and I worked in PR, public relations. Um, and there was a lot of energy, a lot of buzz about Stucom. And this year, it was it was different. It was interesting. I felt like there was kind of a slow start to things. A lot of commissioners, um, I felt like maybe didn't really know what was going on. And this Darren, what he just said um, in his last statement to Bianca, or at least answer about training. And I think that's really big, and not necessarily saying I'm going to train everyone, that's my job, but I really want to work on the cohesion within SNUCOM. I think that even though it's such a small body, there's so much going on, and I think that's kind of involves the confusion that's kind of gone on um, this year with what does SNUCOM do. There's so many different things that you do do, or that people that people do. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, um, and I want to make sure that everyone in the position knows exactly what's going on. I, you can't really have um, at least with our short quarters, a slow start, and that's kind of been an issue in the past as well. And I really want to be a resource to everyone that's going on. Um, I was the Secretary of Finance this year, and uh, one thing that Darren, not Darren and I specifically did, but I remember the meeting, it's kind of exciting about expanding the FPC cap and how much we can approve, and how much that really changed how Stucom really functioned. Uh, a lot of the finance focus was kind of taken away from the meetings, but I still feel like people really viewed Stucom as still in the funding source, and I don't want that to be the only people, or only image people have of Stucom. There's a lot that people do, um, and a lot of perspectives and different experiences that you can have on Stucom, and I want to really uh, support those roles at least, because as, I mean, as Ian just said what my role is, it says I'm supposed to support Darren, and then if something goes wrong, or if this happens, this is a myth, support the president, and then if something goes wrong or whatever, I would take his role. So it doesn't really have any clear guidelines what I want or what I'm supposed to do. So I want to have a supporting role. I know 
um, at least with Kelly taking over as Secretary of Finance, I'm sure she's doing, doing a great job, but there's lots of busy roles that people have, and I feel like everyone needs support, and having such a small uh, student body, it, it's not like you have a huge school, you don't go to do that, it's not state, um, and we have a small student government, and I feel like for us to really impact the campus, the, it starts with how well we can function as a student government. And I feel like everyone needs to know what's going on, everyone needs to be comfortable with their role, and have everyone supporting them. And as my kind of free roam position, um, and still on the executive board, still in, in contact with administration, I can really pull from a lot of sources on campus, not just within StuCon, kind of roam around, go to student org meetings. There's a there's a freeness to it, which I'm really excited for. There's kind of big roam, uh, roaming to it. And with um, the COSO, which is the Committee of Student Organizations, this is kind of, it kind of tapped into that. That's something we did this year, meeting with stewards, um, steward leaders. And there are a lot of similar thoughts around campus, what people want to be done. And there's just not that connecting figure and not someone that's kind of bringing everyone together. Let's, hey, let's do this. It's just kind of, everyone kind of has ideas floating around and it's not really going somewhere. And I want StuCon to be able to pull that really engage with these ideas and bring them together. Um, so as Vice President, obviously, I would go with that. Um, sorry, I'm kind of losing my train of thought here. I apologize for that. Sorry, OK, thank you. Um, one thing that Darren and I want to do that we discussed is the President's Advisory Council. And what's different, I mean, going to KA, we kind of complain about a 45 second walk to the CAF, a very convenience oriented. Um, and this wouldn't be something that we want to be necessarily in person because it kind of pulls everyone's busy and we get that. Uh, it's something that people can, throughout doing homework any time throughout the day, we want to do them, at least we talk about doing them once per month. And people can dial in, it's a conference call, it can be convenient to really gauge and pull from people from all throughout the campus and talk about what's going on uh, to continue with that. And with that, um, going on to what people want, why I kind of mentioned um, free, his adjustments of the, uh, the gift fund. And something that Darren and I want to do is the Student Innovation Fund. And because the gift rule or gift fund has been kind of so vague about what can be done, it's kind of, there's haven't been clear guidelines, we want to focus it on something that will directly impact the campus and help out the campus. So yes, anyone can pull from it. You don't necessarily have to be part of the store. That's not what we want. But we want people to have a direct, positive impact on the campus. And even people want to go on conferences to really have more, uh, not liability, but accountability in what they're going to bring back and contribute. So Darren and I obviously both really excited to do this. I really want to take this role on to help out StuCon because the better our commission, uh, or the better prepared they are for the roles, I feel like we can better impact the campus. Okay, um, time. So we're going to fix the Sorry, did you say something again? Uh, <laughs> uh, Was that a no? I can't hear you. Uh, we're at five time. minutes. Got it. Well, good. Say goodbye. So thank you all. Don't, don't leave. Don't leave. Don't yeah, leave. Yeah, actually, yeah, there'll be a question session after Hagen speaks. OK, well, that's, you know, <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yes, next up we have Ogden Wright, who is also running for Vice President. Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah. Um, my name is Ogden Wright, and I'm running for Vice President of the Student Commission. I'm first year commission of serving three years thus far on the commission. Um, currently serving the capacity as chair of the committee on student organizations and as sitting on other committees which relate to student life, public relations, international studies, business, and student constitutional integrity. I made it a personal goal from my first election to the commission to be involved in its affairs and to try to get an understanding of how it operates. What relates to students and in what capacity we were involved in the decision making process of the school. As I have said to many persons in the past couple of weeks who are going door to door and public spaces as well, I believe that the Commission has the potential to be a strong advocate and promoter of student interest on campus, given our involvement in almost every single aspect of a student's relationship with administration and faculty. At this moment in time, however, I do believe that the Commission, I do not believe, sir, that the Commission is living up to its true potential. We are to have the much discussion, come to the table with a raft of proposals that will enhance the effectiveness of the Commission. The main goals which we believe that will allow us to achieve these core go the core goal would include an improved method of collecting student input, improving the effectiveness of the commission, and most importantly, reevaluating our relationship with administration. Improving student input is critical because the commission cannot act on behalf of the student body if it is not fully aware of the opinions of students on campus. It would be ludicrous to believe that the student commission 
connect without having a full sense of the issues on campus, and we will change this simply by hosting more events geared towards gathering student input on campus. We have a responsibility to proactive in how we go about doing this, and we're capable as a commission of doing so. While we push as a commission, well, while we push to have a commission that satisfies the goal of effective student input to better enable us to act as representatives, having an inefficient commission would render this effort useless if we're unable to act on that input decisively and in a collective sense. This is why we're pushing for greater unification and involvement of commissioners and student committee leaders are in the decision making process. With regards to strengthening the commission, this is where I believe my role comes into account. The current initiative by which the president and the vice president share duties exclusively and get assigned to the president is an excellent one. It is something we will stick to without hesitation as it serves to reduce the burden of any one person and tie in with our goal of effective teamwork and shared decision making on the commission. Bianco and Darwin our respective president and, and vice president, have done an excellent job in sharing responsibilities and done so in a manner where the commission is not dependent on one person to handle decisions made when interacting with administration and faculty. All this would have the effect of having a stronger body of student representatives serving in next year, if white and are allowed to serve. Now with enhanced representation and student input, we have to look at how we're positioned to act on this. This would involve reevaluating our current role we play in relationship in our relationship with the administration. Student Commission will believe currently acts in the capacity as an advisor to the administration on student issues and concerns. We believe that in order to be a body actively seeking to advocate on the behalf of students, there ought to be a guarantee that the Commission is involved in the decision-making process of the school. We believe that this will start with commissioners being present at meetings when actual decisions are being made in order to guarantee that the concerns of students are being given close attention and done to the fullest extent. This will begin to take us away from the current top-down relationship that we have with administration. Using that as a launching pad, we would push to have voting rights on administrative bodies in order to secure our interests as students. These three main goals will serve to reinforce our goal of effective student representation. We have chosen to run because we believe we can make a genuine change in the way the Commission operates. We believe that we have the ability to do so because we have been heavily involved in the work that the Commission has been pursuing over the past year. We're bringing a practical approach to how the commission is operated, not only from the experience of in Stucom, but from active conversation with students. We attend a school with a, wealth of highly with a wealth of highly talented and brilliant individuals who have a lot to contribute to the never-ending process of improvement to the commission. We believe that we have the right approach to promoting and defending student interests, and we'll pursue steadfastly and without reservation. You, the students, have trusted us to act on your behalf thus far, and so we ask you to renew that trust in us. To bring change that we believe is vital of tremendous benefit to the campus. Let's make it happen, Kezu, and vote for Wild and myself this coming Thursday. Thank you. for both of you. Um, in the past two, three years, uh, Vice President has been a lot of different roles. There's been the pit bull role to the just facilitator for SUCOM, sending emails, getting together, and getting everything together. I'm curious how would you define your role? I know Cameron kind of touched on this, but I didn't hear you touch on it, so I'm curious how both of you would define it. Well, um, as I mentioned earlier, the way Bianca and Darren operates, is a, I believe it's a case where they split duties, in a sense. And I think that's the best way to approach handling this um, any issue that's brought to commission. That's something that we will con we'll continue because we believe that's the best way of actually like getting leadership done within the commission. So that's how I would approach it. Um, I can. Do you want me to continue on that, Colin? Sure. Okay. I guess kind of simply put, um, I don't really feel that I kind of need to hold Darren's hand throughout this. I really trust Darren and what he wants to do, and he. We talked about how we kind of want to get um, Stucom kind of pushed along at first, and we talked about special projects, things like that, but who I really want to support is the entire commission itself. Um, Darren and I would obviously be working together, but if anyone else on the commission needs help, I want to support them throughout the role, give them any um, assistance that I can, and really be a resource to not just the heads of the committees, but even 
uh, just members within committees. Everyone, I mean, everyone is important on student comments. I, that's why we vote for all of them. So make sure that everyone's working together is really want to want to work with. Okay. Any further questions? Um, my question is directly more towards Cameron. You said that you had you well with your role as a supporting like factor, not just to Darren but the rest of the commission. That you're gonna have a lot more like free time to kind of like do a lot of stuff, but you didn't really give any specifics on what you could potentially do, especially with like hinting toward there's a lot of uh, like student interest in like things that weren't also specified. Um, I don't know if you have any specifics on what you could do with that free time, considering if you're gonna have so much free time like as a VP, like what you could do to improve or help students with their interests. Okay. I guess maybe free time isn't the best word, but more so freedom of what my responsibilities are. Um, being, I mean, I wasn't involved in every uh, committee on StuCom, and there are roles that I don't fully understand. I know that there's um, obviously different functions for each committee, but what I want to do with that in terms of the free time and how to help out is kind of pull ideas. What I kind of mentioned that before is how there are student groups and people maybe not necessarily even in student orgs, that want to do projects, and I guess this is kind of vague because it's kind of difficult to give a specific example for um, something that someone wants to do when things are different each year, and I'm not going to plan for the future what someone specifically wants to do, but at least in terms of polling for information from stewards and from groups and people on StuCom. Um, because I want to kind of be a liaison with everyone. Is that fair to, to your question, to be a liaison and kind of connect these thoughts? Um, so that people can work together on projects. Because I know that there are lots, like what I said, there are people that have similar ideas and I want these different people to be able to work together on that. Does that answer your question or not so yeah, much? Yeah, that answers it, but like, as a liaison, it sounds like more specific. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. No. So when the recall, this is to the both of you, uh, we can both address this question. When the recall occurred, I observed like reactions of students and reactions of commissioners. And as I took a step back and observed people's reactions, um, Plenty of commissioners, um, some of them including that are up here, kind of, oh, apparently we're not transparent. Like what? Just your reactions to the public openly, um, almost forgetting that you're a commissioner. Um, how do you plan on serving students that you do not understand and putting aside your personal views and even feelings at times to still serve those who, whom you may not understand? Um, I'd like to start off by saying that a lot of confusion was happening at that time. I know personally I was very confused because I didn't know what the hell was going on. Um, it took a while for us to catch up. Took too long, I think. And eventually we got correct together and we dealt well, not deal with the situation. But try to approach it in the best way possible. And I think there will be times when, as commissioners, despite the fact that we're all so different and we bring different talents to the table, that we may not necessarily know how to approach a situation. And I think just by virtue of the fact that we have a commitment to being willing to understand the situation and to actually like put together a united effort to bring solutions to that, that problem is the best way forward. Um, for me to give a specific example, I, I think would be, I don't think that would be fair because of course, situations come up as they do. But I just think that general mindset and approach to trying to understand the situation is a good way to deal with it. Um, with regards to the recall itself, I, I, I admire the fact that we brought in, her name is Jamie Grant, I think, yeah. to um, help us try and understand what the hell was going on and how the two parties can come together and discuss what it is that, what everybody feels, how everybody feels, what everybody thinks was the best way forward. I would like that sort of approach having people come in to help us understand if we don't know if we don't know what's happening ourselves and that's the way I think we should approach it. Um, Melly, so your two questions were kind of how did we react and how will we react to a similar situation of something if we don't understand what's going on? Is well, that... you, don't, you don't have to necessarily address how you reacted, but it's, there were reactions in which you dis, in which certain commissioners dismissed the concerns of uh, students that were organized in the recall and that were in agreement with the recall and mm -hmm. openly and publicly expressed it, some of you privately, um, but how would you go about dealing with a situation that frustrates you in that way and concerns of students that you may not understand, how can you address a concern that you don't understand without dismissing their feelings? 
Sure. Um, my response is this, I'm answering it by saying what happened, I guess, with the recall was um, I didn't fully understand it. It kind of came to me. It was a lot of hearsay. He said, she said. And I don't like responding to those kind of situations in terms of I'm going to act on these things being facts or not. So if I'm confused about something, I don't act as if I know about it. That's not, I would rather question things, um, get what I can out of it, and then take from taking the information to respond to it effectively, or at least the best I can. Um, in future situations, um, yeah, sometimes you don't know everything that's going on, but I feel like you have to be patient and open-minded, um, especially with big issues. I think from the recall itself, there were a lot of people, I think there was a similar, not desire, but you kind of, the same end result. Stucon wanted student interest, um, people to be more interested in Stucon. The students wanted Stucon to be more interested in students. There was, it was kind of a similar idea of what people wanted, just went about in completely different ways, I guess. But it's still, it's still not a great end result. Um, in terms of people being interested. So for future future <coughs> things, not really knowing what's going on, you, I, you don't just miss something because you don't understand it. You try to learn more from it. You don't react to it. Uh, obviously, discussions would follow through with it. So I'm more of the have a patient, open-minded, but still be active to it and really give what you can and learn what you can and then go from there. Yeah, I would like to follow up on what Mela said. I don't think it was I don't think it was really answered. I think um, even now, as a commissioner, I still feel like when certain comments are said by certain people, people kind of just like a little, mm, you know what I'm saying? Um, and kind of, they're not really trying to understand. And a lot of times that's my frustration on student commission. Um, so how would you, as VP, try to, um, I guess, really make sure that I mean, you can't, you can't, um, you can't really help be held. I guess how how would you hold them accountable in terms of really trying to understand um, um, people's frustrations? And I, I can say specifically about um, yesterday, a comment was said by a certain person on the commission, and I felt like it was kind of just shut down. And I think that the communication within the commission itself needs to better. Um, so I guess how would you guys go about? Kind of going off of what Malay said and, and the reaction is officially addressing the concern. The, the first thing I would like to do is to ask commissioners if they felt any discomfort or they felt as though they weren't being given a fit, like sufficient chance to act in their capacity as commissioner to come and talk to me. Because I mean, just where else am I going to start if I don't know what the problem is or what you really feel or how best to go about the situation, how you really feel best that I should go about the situation. I believe that having that dialogue is the first place to start. And um, with regards to current behavior of commissioners and how we could possibly change this, I think strengthening the body itself would be an effective solution to that. I mentioned that earlier when I was talking. And I think one of the reasons we tend to be so, we, like so many like things tend to get lost in, in translations because Apart from Monday night meetings, there's no like real like opportunity for us as commissioners to like actually sit down and consult and discuss things, you know. And that's certainly one of the things that I want to change with those um, committee leader meetings and having meetings with um, with commissioners upon. I mean, of course we can do that now, but I heavily emphasize it because I think the best way to handle any form of problem is to actually have a discussion about it. Um, yeah, I agree. I think the first thing that you need to do is really discuss with the person that has a concern. I, you can't just kind of guess what people want. You really need to try to understand at least if, from that basis. In terms of what commissioners say and the, you said them, when you said them, um, was this Roxy that said this? Yes. When you said them, Roxy, were you referring to commissioners saying things? Well, part of it, I don't, yeah. Yes. Okay, well, you, 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 you used the word them, so. so I assume that you're talking about them as in commissioners' reactions and what they would say. So I would say, I mean, it goes part of training and making sure people understand that there is a professionalism that's involved in student commission and representing other students. Of course, everyone has their own opinions and everyone has their things that they can say, but they're, said, they're saying things representing other students and representing themselves. So I can't control everything someone says by any means, but I can still try to make sure that they need to realize that there's a professionalism that should be held in this and that 
there are real concerns going on. So these comments that are just said, they don't just go, I don't think they should go and notice. Like you said, that there was something that was just kind of brushed under the rug. Um, I think these things need to be brought up. If there's an issue, it needs to be addressed. And if there's two sides of an issue, both of those things should be hashed out and make sure everyone has their perspectives that are said and kind of find a middle ground. I think that a lot of times when there's an issue on something, people kind of take two opposite perspectives on things. Um, and you kind of really need to make sure that there's a middle ground that's found. So that's what I would work for is finding a middle ground and kind of a compromise between things. And maybe not even compromise, just make sure that people know what's going on and that both parties can do whatever they can to best reach the goals that they want. Um, I am sorry, but we are two minutes over time for this, so we can't take any more vice presidential questions. Um, thank you, the two of you, for your answers. Um, 
And then this part I actually didn't write down, but I want to address uh, the way that the students view FPC and the Secretary of Finance and how SGCOM does budget. <coughs> it's really important, and I think that it's um, it's kind of clouded people's vision of SGCOM. Um, some people just view us as like a budgeting body, and like we only hold the money. And I think commissioners have started to view us as that too. They forget that we have like 20 plus committees. FPC is only one, and not even like half of of the commission is on it. And I think we do spend too much time on it in the meetings. It's overshadowing other committees. And even though I love FPC, I want it to be um, not the only thing that SUCOM is. I want SUCOM to grow as well as that. And having a consistent Secretary of Finance is it's going to be good for that. People can still see, have a groundwork. FPC needs to work this way. This isn't working, etc. And with all the changes that are going to be happening in SUCOM, I think this would be a huge benefit. Um, I don't need three weeks to get up on my feet again. I can hit the ground running with all of these ideas in a year. Um, but in order to do that, I still need you to vote. On a post or not, your opinion of me and my abilities, it still really matters. And I would not be comfortable having this position if I didn't have all of you backing me up. So I'm really glad you guys came. I really appreciate your support and the trust you've shown me in the past quarter. I know that a first year being Secretary of Finance is a kind of iffy position, but I don't take it for granted. I hope it has worked as well for you as it has for me. And remember to vote on Thursday. Okay, so we'll now have 10 minutes for questions for Kelly. Uh, do you want to start with? Um, my question is sort of about your Money and I actually work with Brian Foster and I know like what a problem it is. And what ideas have you guys bounced around that like might seem to be useful? I don't know if you can remember. Um, let's see, this was a couple weeks ago. Um, what? What? Gift cards. Yes, gift um, cards. That's been one. There's a problem with every kind of solution we come up with, it has its own like big pitfalls. Mm -hmm. So, gift cards, that's been one, but then there's a pitfall of like what if you them. You know, it's the same thing with preloadable credit cards. If you lose them, that money's not coming back. Um, and so we're kind of waiting for banks to catch up on that. Uh, another thing has been uh, stored credit cards, but that's kind of an iffy thing because who's the issue to? Um, there's the liability issue with that between the school and the bank. Um, and I think the other GLCA schools have had this done, like they've figured out a system for it but it's taken time for them and it's going to take time for us. And so what I've been doing, I've been saving a little folder, been saving all the emails from Stuart leaders saying like, I need help running money, like what am I supposed to do? And I say like, unfortunately we don't have a system for this. It's all on a case by case basis. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why I want to change. And we still need to figure it out, but like that's <coughs> something the administration can help us do. Mm -hmm. I'm going off of that. Have like set up debit cards where you have set amount of money that they're allowed to have, and then you guys would have the money for a store organization. Um, I think I'm not sure about like the inner workings of the bank, but I'm pretty sure that would also have the same issue. Um, like each debit card has to have a name on it, whose whose name goes on it. We can't put. Unfortunately, I don't think we can put like Freeland Dance Company on a credit card. Um. Could it be the deans? We're not sure. That's also a liability thing. Um, yeah, unfortunately, like I don't have like an exact answer for that. I know this has been worked out a lot this past year, but I mean, I haven't been around since I've been run. Um, but I know it was a big problem last year about the whole concern about setting precedents with uh, funding things for stores, like. Uh, t-shirts and food and things like that. I wonder if you could touch on any ideas that you have about setting um, like written rules for th funding for those things or what has already been done? Um, that hasn't been done yet, but that's something that maybe should be done. Um, it is kind of exhausting for both us and for stewards when they like request like food for an event. Like uh, time and time again, we have to say like, this isn't really what the student activities fee covers. Um, and that is something like in the upcoming like constitution discussions, that's something that I've been thinking about that like um, a lot of the FPC bylaws are really just like up for interpretation. 
and that's these funding of t-shirts, funding of food, that's something that we need to lay down the law for, but um, there are exceptions for everything, like we fund Dr. Pella shirts because they use them for like a kind of costume thing, we fund food for certain, certain events because it's integral, but then there's always like a fine line and it's hard to see where that is, but um, that's going to be a really important discussion. Any further questions? Um, you mentioned, and I know that the process of FPC is like pretty complicated at times. Um, what do you have any strategies in terms of training um, student organizations? Because I, uh, for example, I have we have Vidi and Mecha, and she does a great job in like doing budgeting and stuff. And I don't want to devalue the work that in the, that treasurers and student organizations do. And I think that gives them a really good familiarity with the process of applying for a budget. Me, myself, I've been involved with the Arctic Center and I've applied for like budgeting through that. So I'm familiar with some sorts, some, with some parts of the process. So would, are you willing to work with student organizations in terms of like training them so in the future it won't only be one candidate running for this position? So you mean how to better train stewards to know like how the system works, how to request money? everything like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's actually something that I started working on with like Wyatt at the beginning of the year. We started doing, um, we actually like got all set up to do this video, going through like the entire process. It's kind of similar to the presentation I gave at the beginning of the year for the steward leader retreat. Um, and then we realized that's probably better to just do that with the new budget request form that will be used next year. Um, but I still have the presentation there, and for now I'm just asking steward leaders to just like shoot me a quick email, I'll meet up with you and help you like do this. Um, but that it's a really important part of the job, and I hope that I've like shown steward leaders that like it's important to me. And I know it can be confusing, but like I've tried to be as transparent as possible and told them like once you give me this form, then it goes to Sally, then it goes to Brian, then it goes to the business office, and then it comes back to you. Um, does that answer your question? Other questions? Does anyone have anything further for secure finance? Other candidates? Um, so, can you just touch on and maybe explain a little bit of the software that you are going to try to use next year or have been introduced by Boss who works for student involvement um, and why that's beneficial, especially to? Like budget planning um, and kind of how stewards spend money if they don't spend it goes back on the balance sheet. Um, yeah, so Bass actually showed this to um, Cam and I when I was only deputy, um, and we both saw it. We were kind of like amazed at how like advanced it is. It probably took him months to build. Um, it's really great. You put in everything that like we approved for the budget request. It itemizes everything, so now, like, if I look at the spreadsheet now, I can see how much money we spent on, like, uh, one-time steward supplies and how much money we spent on, like, speakers. Um, and then it also categorizes the student comp budget as well as the gift fund. So, uh, let's see. That, um, when you put it in the budget, that's just, it just automatically does everything. It's become a learning process because you need to know how to kind of change it for each individual basis, what happens if the steward isn't on the list. Um, and it also has been, the part of the learning process is when a steward doesn't spend like the full amount of money they're allocated, that's actually in the whole other part of the spreadsheet. It shows um, how under budget they were for each one. Uh, and that's, um, it's kind of embodied exactly what, from what I've heard, Stupon has been wanting the past couple of years. Uh, unfortunately, we can't really look at that like directly for this year because like we switched systems two thirds of the way through the year, um, and there wasn't really a system for that before. But um, starting the new year, I'll be able to see like exactly how much money we have, uh, which will be like amazing because right now the figure is still like really up in the air, and it's been one of the most like frustrating things this quarter. But I, that's all going to be changed with this new sheet. Do we have anything further for Kelly? It was kind of a clarification question, but um, so Cameron brought up earlier this new introduction of a different fund of either in, like in lieu of or instead of, or in addition to the gift fund. Like, what are your thoughts on that? And like, would you have a role in that? 
Have they talked to you about it? Um, I hope I would have a <laughs> I really want one. Um, so my view on the gift fund right now is that the biggest problem is like, what do we spend it on? Like it's like a thousand dollars, like that's completely up in the air. It just says like a non-steward. Um, and there's been some like really interesting ideas thrown up. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you guys. So, Darren, yours is the Student Innovation Fund, five thousand dollars for just like a change on campus. Um, that it's a good idea. I also see, and I have talked about this. Um, I also see some problems with it, but it's still up for interpretation. What what is an actual change? Does it have to change the lives of fourteen hundred students? Um, and then your guys is you want to get rid of it completely. You fun. Yeah, but then open up the general fund to students as well. Yeah. And then that like it's still up for interpretation and I mean StuCon has spent years trying to get an exact guideline as to like what is an actual change. Um, and I don't know if that is something that can be set out in stone because like they spent years debating about it, like who knows when that's going to get down. My view is, is that the gift fund is something that's really been utilized this year. Uh, we were able to like send someone to Taiwan and um, that was a long debate and we thought really long and hard about it, but I personally don't regret spending that money. Um, my personal wish on it, I want to do something with like SIP presentations because every single gift fund we, brought, we got this year, um, I'm pretty sure it was all SIP presentations and that's something that like departments can't fund on their own. Um, and that's just one concentration that I might maybe want to kind of look into. Even if we don't personally fund it, I want to hold the administration accountable for funding that because that's one of the four main parts of why we're here. Like we should have backing up for that. Thanks. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Thank Office we're moving on to is the Secretary of Student Affairs position. The Constitution for the Secretary of Student Affairs reads, the Secretary of Student Affairs shall serve as chair of the Student Affairs Committee, serve on the correlated committee in the Office of Student Development, and gather student input and concerns on issues related to student life, including, but not limited to, residential life, student involvement, multiculturalism, student activities, and the and travel and I'd like to welcome Ryan as our first candidate for Secretary of State. Good evening, everyone. As Ian just said, my name is Ryan Brown. I'm a rising sophomore here at K, and um, this is my third term on the Student Commission. Thank you for all of your support thus far for those of you who have voted for me, and I've really enjoyed my experience on the commission. Um, currently, I serve on uh, actually a a fair number of committees. I serve on the SOCO committee, which is for student organizations, FPC, alumni relations, um, okay, a lot, but I won't list. Um, back to why I'm campaigning and why I'm speaking to you. I'm running for Secretary of Student Affairs. Um, Secretary of Student Affairs, as Ian listed, is a very new position on the commission e-board, and that's why I feel that I should run for it because it's very fresh and I have a lot of new ideas for it. Alex Werner, um, he just let out, but I think he's done a great job at serving in this position and I would love to pick his brain more on where he sees the position going if you guys elect me. But um, as far as I'm concerned, um, my interpretation of the Constitution's role of the position is for me to be the student liaison. And that would mean me being, I guess, the most visible member of the executive board on the commission. And that's where I will hold myself accountable if I am elected. Um, that means that I will be accessible to you guys and I will also be the person to hold anybody else on the commission accountable. If you guys have a problem or you guys see that there's an area that needs to be addressed, then I could be your liaison to talk to the president or vice president because like Darren said, it's not about who fills this position, it's about serving you guys. So I take it upon myself to be the liaison in whatever way you see fit. And um, as the enlisted, there are five categories that are listed but not limiting to what the Secretary of Student Affairs is supposed to serve. And right now on Student Commission, we're working on a multicultural committee. 
And I think it's a great kind of like prototype to see where I want to take this position next year. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar, but I'll explain. The Committee on Multiculturalism is forming, and I think what's unique about that is kind of getting to where, Marissa, you were addressing a little earlier your question. Um, how do students kind of get involved and feel relevant? And I think one good thing about the Multicultural Committee, <coughs> excuse me, is that um, I've been very active in the forming of this committee, and one good thing is that we will actually have students on this committee. And what better way to reach the students than to have you guys sit on our own commission committees. And there's also a residential life committee that's been formed that I'm not personally very involved in. But I think I want the multicultural committee to be kind of a prototype to get students involved in. It's not just these students being like the student commission spies. Like, no, you actually get to sit, on the ta sit at the table with staff members. We have Lisa Brock and um, Dean Joshua sitting on this committee. And you guys will actually be a chair of this committee as well. So I'm more about taking the next steps to really get students <coughs> involved in student commission and letting you guys be hands-on because I have a lot of friends that, you know, they get to know me and they're like, man, I don't really want to be a commissioner, but how do I get involved? And I think this would be a great input and a great way to, you know, kind of change the way the student commission works. And one of the great things about the Constitution is that you can change it. And um, <laughs> I think, with the student input, my role will be very dependent on what you guys want me to do. And I think I have a very good relationship with the administration that when I have your concerns, they will be willing to listen to me and they will be also be open to hearing your concerns through me as well as you sitting at the table with me. And that's really where I want to take this position and I'm really excited because it's fresh, it's new, and I really am excited about where it can go. And I hope you guys um, support me and vote for me this Thursday. Okay. Uh, next up, we'd like to welcome Tendai Mudiwa as our second candidate for Secretary of State. Um, okay, good evening, everyone. My name is Tendai Mudiwa. I'm a junior here, and I've served on the commission my first year and sophomore year, and I served as vice president during my sophomore year, and I work with Meredith, who happens to be in the room right now. And during that year, I played more of the, like a feeling in the role, like whenever there was a community that was being formed, I was always there to like help in and get it started. So that's more of the role that I played as vice president. So I spent a year off. This year I didn't, um, for the first two quarters, I'm part of the student commission because I was trying to reevaluate what I want to do during my senior year and what role do I see myself playing on, on the student, playing on student commission and I decided to run for student affairs for the following reasons. So over the past few weeks I've been asked time and again by my fellow students why am I running for sector of student affairs. Over the past few years I've also been constantly asked why I've continually served on the commission when sometimes it seems that our work is not appreciated by everyone. More recently, I've been confronted by a friend who argued that even though we put a lot of time and effort into the student commission, our gains are marginal. My simple response to all of this has been that I care about the students, I care about this institution, and I'm willing to put in time and effort to work towards the betterment of our campus community. I've been at this great institution for three years, two of which I spent on the commission. During that time, I've witnessed the school change right before my eyes. To put this into, into perspective, we're on the verge of signing a new Food provider. The faculty is now proactive on the issue of, ethnic, of an ethnic studies program, and K is a lot more diverse in many ways than it was a few years ago. However, one of the issues that I hear in my conversations with peers is that the institution is not changing fast enough to address the concerns that are arising from our ever-evolving campus. These concerns are real, and, the, and they deserve to be heard because every student deserves to have a great and meaningful experience during their time here. This is why I'm running for sector student affairs, because I believe it is a position that will put me in a great, that allow me to play a pivotal role in advocating for students on our campus and establishing a more efficient commission for the years to follow. Before I delve into what I hope to accomplish by the end of the year, let me elaborate why I'm, why I'm qualified for this position. Since arriving at K College, I've been involved in the campus community. I've established with students across years via the student commission, as a peer leader, and also as a student. I've also established connection with the administration, alumni, and, and the faculty through my work on Stucom as a student ambassador and as a student employee in the registrar's office and in the admissions office. Also, I served on the, exec 
exactly for during my sophomore year. And that experience made me wiser in knowing what works and I will be able to hit the ground running if I'm elected for this position. As, sector, as your sector of student affairs, I hope to accomplish the following. Firstly, I want to Im implement an efficient way of keeping track of student issues on our campus and ensure that they are being addressed and we're providing the necessary feedback to people who are concerned about those issues. Secondly, I believe that the even though our constitution may be imperfect in some ways, we do have the right structures right now to implement change. So I plan to use the existing structures to better I plan to use the existing structures to better implement student affairs on our campus and try to make things work by being there for all the students. Also, I want progress. And if I serve as a sector of student affairs, or even Ryan says as, as a sector of student affairs, they're only here for one year. But I want the, the, com the commission to continue afterwards. So, in terms of addressing these concerns as a sector of student affairs, I want to implement a strategy for somehow mentoring new students about what the commission has worked on, what the current student affairs are at the moment, what have been in the past, so that they can know what the commission is about, and they, they, they then can continue the good work that everyone has been doing in the previous years, so that we don't have a dramatic shift when a new board comes in, and also the first years can have an opportunity to know this is what has happened in the past, this is what works and what doesn't. Also, I pledge to continuously make an effort to be open and engaging all students on our campus in order for them to know what I can do for them as a representative, in order for them to know, in order for me to know what needs to be done. And that can be done by meeting with students at events, meeting students through like meet, arranged meeting with student organization leaders. Lastly, while I may not be the most vocal person in the room, I pledge to bring mature, thoughtful, and considerate contributions whenever I'm advocating for your affairs. And this is why I want you to vote for me on Thursday. Thank you. Okay, and now we have a 10 minute question session for the Secretary of Student Affairs candidates. Um, do we have questions? I appreciate it. Um, so there's this buzzword that's going on in higher education um, of, of uh, inclusion, all right, it's being an inclusive campus. And um, some of the names that you mentioned in the administration, um, the, the way that they have um, approached that is that um, it's like sameness and not, um, not wanting to divide different groups of students, whether it be by race, gender, class, and what have you. And so my question to you, because in the way that I view inclusion is more of a, a responsiveness to what students need. So, uh, Samantha, if you are sitting on this multicultural board with these two administrators, or two um, authority figures you were talking about, and you have students, um, and you have, I, I don't know, I'm just, I'm wondering how you, you would navigate between these two different ways of responding to what students need and desire, and then also having someone in an authority position say that, mm -mm, I'm not about to do that because we're an inclusive campus. So I'm wondering how you would negotiate and navigate that. And if you want me to clarify, like, let me know. But I'm, I'm just curious as to what you all think of that, since the current theme here is that you all are here to defend and um, uh, promote the needs and desires of the student body. So that's what we're Um, so, if I understand your question right, you're saying that let's say I'm in a meeting with an administrator and the topic, uh, considering one set of group of students, is brought up and it's shut down by the administration because they believe in sameness. Um, after having been in such meetings um, during my first year and sophomore year, what I can say is that administration will take you seriously if you're able to make the case that it's more than just a single group of students that like, are advocating for this issue. So before I go to such a meeting, I think it's important for me to reach out to different students beyond that group that's affected and make and sort of generate support from a lot more students than just one group. And I believe that's the only way you can make the, your argument more valid because they preach a lot about how you have to reach out to a lot of students and how you have to represent them both the same body. So I believe when you're presenting such issues to administration, you have to tell them that it's not only that group that believes that, it's like, the, like a lot of students on campus, and I, that's when they take it seriously. Um, if I'm understanding your question correctly, like you were saying that like we're at the, for instance, the multicultural committee, we have the students there, and then we have the commissioners there, and we have administration there. 
And I think like the benefit of the multicultural committee and what we're forming is that like all these students aren't the same. So like these issues will come up, but I think one thing that I'm learning about um, a lot of these like differences and struggles, like they all are intersection, they're intersectional. And in a sense, like different people will, like have different struggles, but on the same thing, they're like, everybody's struggling for the same thing. And I think like that's the beauty of it, but also um, kind of like what Tendai was saying is, is that it's not just one group of students supporting an issue. And I think that's why we're being very careful on which students we choose to come into the room. Because like, you know, like me being like an African American member, like it's not like my choice to like only advocate for African Americans and like only Latinas or like because like, so like the choices of students will be very conscious and we're thinking about doing an election process and which has been very <coughs> like, I guess beneficial because at the end of the day the students choose and like then you have that accountability for those people and to make sure that the students wanted them. So I can see where that would happen but I guess like we're trying to be proactive in preventing that from happening because we'll have a diverse group of students in the room to prevent that from like, oh, there's only one person in the room right now. So we're trying to be proactive and prevent that from even happening. Thank you. Do we have further questions? Um, actually, I mean, I'm just wondering, I know there's a lot of people leaving right now, and I was curious if we would be able to hear from the remaining two candidates for the other position and then return to questions if there's people have questions. I don't know how people feel about that. Mm -hmm. I, would like to, I would like to hear what you would like to hear what the remaining candidates have to say. I really, I don't want to cut Ryan and turn that off, but like we have gotten to hear your guys' thing, and I do want to run to that for people to keep looking. Yeah, are you guys okay with coming back to five more minutes of questions for two minutes later? Okay, well then we can move on to the Secretary of Communications position. Um, thank you for your answer so far. Um, and what we got in the Constitution for Secretary of Communications are Secretary of Communications shall serve as the chair of the Communications Committee, provide information to the student body and the college community regarding the student commission, and maintain all student commission social media outlets. So first I would like to welcome up uh, Roxana Nachaka as our first Secretary of Communications candidate.
Catherine. Um, and it, it has become clear to me that um, as the Secretary of Communications, we need to kind of stop um, wanting students to reach out to us and, and really take initiative um, into reaching out to the student body. Um, with that being said, I have had to get input from the if elected the first couple of weeks um, from students um, by meeting one on one with them and all kinds of students, not just student organization leaders, because that's kind of something we usually lean towards, um, or doing a survey. Um, however, I'm a little bit more um, towards the pe personal one on one communication, so that's kind of where I'm heading towards. Um, some of my other goals as Secretary of Communication is to make um, the Student Commission more present on campus uh, by sponsoring like more events and <coughs> hyping up events like um, via media. Um, we also think that in order for this to happen, all commissioners um, need to be constantly attending events um, in a in various um, things, whether it's like a, a basketball game or a theater, um, some type of performance. Um, and in order to really like hold um, commissioners accountable, I want to implement some type of like, um, I guess uh, I don't say point, I guess point system um, to kind of have incentives because I know that um, like Darren said, it's not mandatory for uh, all commissioners um, to attend various events, but I think that if we have some type of incentive for commissioners to attend um, these various events and and be more present on campus, I think um, that would raise our um, uh, the amount of people that go to um, the events. Um, so um, another thing, although it's not part of the Constitution, I really want to make sure that I am able to work um, with the other executive board members and um, really establish a good communication within the Commission. Um, although um, my number one goal is to strengthen the relationship within the student body and the commission, I also think that it begins within the commission. Sorry. Um, um, and so just strengthening um, that relationship. Um, one of the other things is that I don't really like, um, in terms of media, um, the liking the page, I feel like we just like it, never look at it again. Um, so I kind of want to um, provide an alternative um, to it, instead of just liking the SUCOM page. Um, and that's kind of the little small things I want to work on. Um, please vote on Thursday, even if it's not for me. Just go on and vote. Um, thank you, that's it. Um, and thank you for coming. Thanks, I'd like to welcome out Carrie Payne, our second candidate for Secretary of Communications. Uh, first, I'd like to say thanks to Roxy. I think you guys have two really solid candidates for this position, and either way, your vote is definitely well spent. So, um, vote on Thursday. Anyway, I'm Carrie Payne. I'm uh, a junior currently here at Kay. And um, just to give you a little background about me, um, I have served on the Student Commission and on the Public Relations Committee for three terms, which is all of my time here. So I have lots of experience being on that committee and doing the work there. I served as um, the Secretary of Public Relations, which is this um, position, what, what it was formerly known as before the uh, constitutional reform. I served as the Secretary of Public Relations for two terms last year, and um, I really found my, my niche there, and I found that that's really what I'm passionate about and what I love doing on this commission, is doing the public relations aspects of things and interacting with students. And um, some of the things I did in that position where I started I uh, started the picture board in Hicks that shows all the faces of the commissioners. Um, I uh, started the, the term table toppers that we do at the end of each term, kind of giving you a little review of what we've done as a commission. We started the half zips that um, kind of identify us as like, hey, we're Stucom people, come talk to us. Uh, so those are just a couple of the things I did. Um, and then over the summer, I attended a conference about um, a leadership conference, and that gave me so many new ideas. And so now I'm really, really excited to get back into this, hopefully, and um, and do a lot more, pick up where I left off. So um, as your Secretary of Communications, some of the goals that I have uh, are to be way more visible on campus. Um, so helping the campus know who we are as a commission, 
helping you remove this sense of elitism that we have, or people think we have. And how I want to do this is have events at the beginning and end of each term, um, you know, in front of Hicks somewhere where we're out talking to students, getting input, um, getting student ideas, uh, and connecting with students face to face, doing a survey um, of students to get more input there, um, have people announce to their classes that they are a student commissioner and that they are welcome to approach them anytime during the term to express ideas or concerns they have. Um, I'd like to continue our office hours that we do. We do office hours in Big B, so you guys should go. Um, and uh, just so people can come and express their grievances and whatnot. Um, I'd like to start an email listserv, and uh, that could vary in frequency depending on what people want. Um, also, tabling to get uh, more input on the student surveys, to get ideas, to get people to sign up for the listserv. Basically, the listserv will help be a little like bite-sized portion of our meetings because I know you guys don't want to go and sit through three hours of StuCom debating. So we could give you a little uh, StuCom in a nutshell kind of thing. Um, also, continue the good job that Captain has done with increasing our Twitter and media presence, um, with creating videos and things like that, um, and some better advertising. So, other goals I have. Um, I would like to create better communication avenues with the administration so that you can better express your concerns and get immediate answers. I would like to um, bring back the forums that used to take place, basically a forum where the administration is up here and you guys can ask questions to them and get immediate answers. I'd like to bring those back, but uh, the concern in the past was that they weren't well attended, so that's why they stopped them. So I'd like to really um, advertise those extremely well and happily and get a ton of people there so that uh, you guys can get that direct communication route um, with the administration instead of having to go through us. Um, other things, I want to increase the cohesion in the group uh, through my role, which is really crucial to being productive as a group and kind of removing the stiffness and elitism that you might feel at the meetings. So how we would do this would be, like Kim and Darren said, better training um, and really understanding each other and um, also creating quarterly commission surveys where people would um, fill them out at the end of each term about what they thought of Stucom and things like that that would be anonymous. And um, then also I'd like to create a more centralized system for knowing what's going on to better help the people that we're helping with our funding. So, you know, creating um, better information distribution systems, working out more on the mobile app for the school, uh, mobile websites, and maybe a text alert system where, you know, text what's up to 844 and you get, you know, a little brief overview of events going on. So those are just some of the highlights of things I want to do. I'm really open to what you have to say. And that's me, Carrie, vote on Thursday. <laughs>
So my goal in this position would be to reach out to those students before they leave and say, hey, this is how you can stay connected to what's going to be going on while you're gone, if you so choose. The time that, you know, like, <coughs> join our listserv, um, follow us on Twitter, yada, yada. And these are the ways that you can stay connected with what we're doing and uh, making that known to them. Oh, going off of that, um, do you guys have any like, ideas on, like, personally, like, I didn't care so much to be so connected, like, while I was gone, because I was gone to get away. But coming back has been really hard. Like, I didn't even hear about this, like, change in season, like, any of that. Like, I heard it through, like, the goodbye and after being there for, like, four weeks. Um, so, like, maybe, like, reintegration of, like, kind of, like, what's up, like, what's had, like, for juniors specifically, or even, like, sophomores who were abroad in the spring, like, what has happened, like, to help them reintegrate into that, like, what's gone on in the past and what we're pushing forward in the future, like, you guys have ideas and, like, ways to help juniors or sophomores get back into that coming back from being abroad. I would say, um, creating some type of forum, like, hey, this is what you've missed, and kind of going through, um, but in a very fun way, like, this is what's happened, this is how, um, we've been impacted, um, I don't want to have great emphasis on email, but if it's just towards a specific group, I think that'd be very effective. Mm -hmm. um, so forums. Yeah, I definitely completely agree with that. Like forums or events with some sort of free food incentive would be really effective, and I'm, re I'm really glad you brought that up. Like that's yeah. a really it could be a really great thing. Um, and uh, yeah, I think in that way. Okay. Further questions. Well, there are no further questions. <laughs> and do we have any concluding questions for our student affairs candidates? This is not for them. There's some people who are confused. No, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> See, you guys who stayed through the whole thing, yeah. Yeah. you guys give me your brownie points. Yeah, and just a reminder, uh, elections will be on <laughs> Thursday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Everyone will get a vote by email, or you can vote at our table at Hicks Center. And everyone who's spoken today will be on the ballots. And everybody who is elected will be sworn in at um, the chapel on Friday of 10th week, and they'll serve for all of next year. So thank you so much for attending and making this a great event.